We all know about ethics before data collection. Don't hurt people. Don't lie to people. Make sure they're volunteering for the study. Inform consent. Make sure they can withdraw at any time. Don't punch them. Don't slap them. Don't inject them with unnecessary needles. Don't call their mom ugly. Don't call their dad ugly. Don't call their siblings ugly. Don't call their cousins ugly. Don't call nobody ugly. And to ensure that, we have all these sorts of protections in place. IRB, annual city training, informed consent. But what about after data collection? And yet, I've never seen statistics texts talk about ethics during data analysis. Have you? I've never seen it. Oh, let me think about it. Yeah, not a chance. I've thought about it. No, never seen it in my life. That I am certain. Well, I'm gonna fix that with my YouTube textbook. I'm gonna teach you the two things that will guarantee that you will be a ninja ethics master. First, the three dimensions of awesome data analyst intentions. Yeah, I need a shorter name. Number two, the six values of grassroots research. So this graphic will make clear exactly where your analysis fits in. It will help you identify in advance of doing your data analysis, where you fit in and how you can do data analysis ethically and what the rules are for doing data analysis ethically. And it will also show you how to best report your analysis. So now onto the three dimensions. First dimension. We have the confirmation at one end of the spectrum versus the discovery at the other end of the spectrum. Sometimes you are trying to confirm something that you already know and or suspect. Or sometimes you're trying to discover something new. And this is a continuum. You can fall anywhere along this continuum. And so here's the rule. If you are on the confirmation side, if you're trying to confirm something that you already know, you're gonna end up playing a game of chance. You're gonna compute the probability of this happening exactly as it happened. Well, like I said in the p-hacking video, if you're rolling the dice repeatedly, it's not impressive if you get three sixes, if you have 100 opportunities to do it. Likewise, when you're in the confirmation end, you get one shot. So that means your analysis plan, your covariates, your dependent variable, your independent variable, everything, your sample size has to be specified in advance. Ideally, it has to be pre-registered. You post your analysis plan, exactly all the details online through a pre-registration so to protect yourself from making stupid decisions. So confirmation means you specify everything in advance. Discovery, you don't have that restriction. Second dimension is the theory driven versus data driven dimension. So sometimes we are letting theory guide the types of research questions that we ask. At other times we are allowing the data to tell us exactly what we are doing. Third dimension, uh, I'm gonna show labels that are either black or red. Red means that the analyst's intentions have been concealed or sometimes uh, they have been deceptive about their intentions, whereas black means that they are transparent. So with that, let's go ahead and look at the three dimensions of awesome data intentions and stuff. So here we are in the top right, we have what is called CDA, which is confirmatory data analysis. And here you are high in confirmation, which means you already have a hypothesis. You're just testing it and you already, and that hypothesis is driven by theory. And like I said, the rules here are that you have to pre-register things and you have to follow your data analysis plan to a T. Otherwise, when you compute probabilities, they are meaningless. Bottom right, you have EDA, which is exploratory data analysis. Here, your research questions are driven by theory. You are letting theory guide the type of analyses that you do, but you are open to discovery here. You don't exactly know how the result will come out, and you are allowing um, your uh, interaction with the data to lead to different discoveries. And then in the middle, we have two things called p-hacking and rough CDA. And these are really the same thing, except that the intentions are different. So we talked about p-hacking in a couple videos ago. Remember that p-hacking means that you run the same analysis multiple ways. So again, you're testing, you have a hypothesis, but you don't necessarily know which measure of the outcome variable is appropriate to use, which measure of the predictor variable is appropriate to use. You don't know what sort of covariates might be important. You don't know what your sample size should be. You don't know if transformations are required. You don't know what sort of analysis to do, those sorts of things. 
And so if you are in rough CDA mode, as Tukey called it, um, you start making all sorts of decisions and you try it multiple different ways and then eventually settle on a model, but you are 100% transparent about exactly what you're doing, exactly what you tried and failed, and also what you tried and succeeded. And the difference between that and p-hacking is with p-hacking, you only report the things that succeed. And that is deceptive. And in the bottom left, we have high on the discovery dimension and high on the data-driven dimension. So the way to ethically do it, we call it data mining, where you basically input into your computer, you input your data into your computer and it will find inter interesting things for you. But we also have harking and phishing. And what phishing means is that you have like 20 tests you could run. You run them all and only report those that are significant. Whereas with harking, that is an added layer of deception. Not only do you have 20 tests that you perform and you only report those that are significant, but then you retroactively write your hypothesis as if that's exactly what you predicted all along. And harking stands for hypothesizing after results are known. Big no-no. So take home message here. One. The more confirmatory you are, the more you have to pre-specify things in advance. Number two, whatever you do, be transparent about it and let people know what you did and what didn't work. So with that, we'll see you next time.